right? Let me show you something that's very important. This is going to come up in Daniel 7. It's going to come up in Daniel 7. I just wanted to check, check something. Okay. Do you see this here? However, there is a God in heaven who reveals mysteries, and he has made known to King Nebuchadnezzar what will take place in the last days. This was your dream and the visions of your head while on your bed. Can I take a moment to unpack this? Okay. I want you to I want you to understand the difference between BC before Christ and AD after Christ. Can we go deep, guys? I mean, I'm here to be used of the spirit to bless you guys. If you think it's a waste of time, well, then I don't need to be here cuz obviously you don't need me and that's a fact. I pray the Lord will use me until I die. All right. Anyway, here you have 28 it says However, there is a God in heaven who reveals mysteries, and he has made known to King Nebuchadnezzar what will take place in the last days. This was your dream and the vision of your head while on your bed. Let me explain to you the difference between the way Old Testament prophets and apostles, meaning sent out ones, saw God and saw heaven from after Christ. B.C. A.D. So we're going to go now here and show you something. So that's why I say it's going to take me longer. So don't expect me to finish all this in one session. Okay, Daniel 2.28. Watch it. So I wanted to make sure it had it. Yes, yeah, so they captured it. Because there are some Bibles that will paraphrase. This is why you do need a Bible that tries to be literal to catch these nuances, these nooks and crannies. Okay, so it says, your dream and visions, Rishak, Rishak, right? That you saw in your head, meaning in your mind, in your mind when you were sleeping. You see that? The dreams and visions you had in your mind when you were sleeping, when you were sleeping. Okay, watch here. Let's see how it translates. It's very translations. Daniel 2.20. It's just going to come up in Daniel 7. Because Daniel 7 and Daniel 2 are about the same theme. So let's go here because I'm going to show you something different. If we believe scripture and we believe the Bible's consistent and we believe the ancient church's understanding is correct, then I'm going to let it leave you in on a little secret. Thy dreams and thy visions of thy head upon thy bed. That rhymes, right? Head upon thy bed. <laughs> Here's this one. This was your dream and the vision appeared in your mind. That's the key. See it? It means what you saw in your mind. You saw something from God, but it was in your mind. Your dream and the vision's in your head. In your mind. So we got the idea what it means, right? What this means, right? In your mind. We got what this means before I move on in your mind. Okay, why am I hammering this point? Because here's something. If you believe scripture, if you believe scripture and it's consistent, this is going to be important. Before the time of Christ. Before the time of Christ. Prophets. Those sent out did not go to heaven in person, enter heaven in person, and come down with revelation. Okay, you with me there? If we believe the Bible is consistent and we believe the Bible doesn't contradict, prophets, as well as those sent out by the Lord, were not taken in person into heaven and came down with revelation. Instead, heaven came to them, meaning they would see heaven in their minds, either in a vision or a dream. But they themselves were not taken into heaven itself. Are you with me there? Into heaven itself. Are you with me there? 
Can't move on if you're not getting it. Let me show you then how they would see heaven. They would see it in their mind as a dream or a vision. So they would see heaven. They would see past. They would see the future. Because one of the names of a prophet is seer here, 1 Samuel 9.9. 9. So I got to go really in depth. That's why it's going to take more than one part. Formerly in Israel, when a man went to inquire of God, he used to say, come, let us go to the seer. For he was called a prophet now, was formerly called a seer. Now, creature repetition. We need to hear something repetitively until it becomes second nature. Because I've already discussed these issues in the past. But again, we need to be reminded of these biblical truths. All right, now watch here. Why were they called a seer? Because they would see heaven and God would let them see the past or the future. So they weren't just told what to say, meaning told this is what's going to happen or this is what happened. Write it down. They were shown. They saw. They saw the past. They saw the future. And they would see heaven. You with me there? You with me there? Everyone got it? All right. 1 Samuel 9, 19. And Samuel answer, answered Saul and said, I am the seer. Go up before me to the high place. For you shall eat with me today. And in the morning, I will let you go. And I will tell you all that is on your heart. All right. See, seer, right? Shown. Now, let me show you Isaiah seeing heaven, but he wasn't taken there in person. He sees heaven. He sees the heavenly throne. He sees God appearing in visible form, but he's not taken there in person. Whether spirit goes there or he goes there in his body. Very important. In the year of King Uzziah's death, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lifted up. With the train of his robe. So I saw, right? Wasn't taken there. With the train of his robe filling the temple. Seraphim stood above him, each having six wings. With two he covered his face. With two he covered his feet. And with two he flew. And one called out to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is Yahweh of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the foundations of the thresholds shook at the voice of him who called out while the house of God was filling with smoke. Then I said, Woe is me, for I am ruined, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips, for my eyes have seen the king, Yahweh of hosts. Right? He saw, but was he taken into heaven? No. Now why was he not taken to heaven? Because Jesus told us something. Watch here. Jesus is talking about the relations of heaven. Look what he says here. Pay attention. I want you to pay attention. Look what our Lord says. Jesus answered, said to him, Are you the teacher of Israel and do not understand these things? He's talking about earthly things. Now, Jesus answered and said to him, Are you the teacher of Israel? And do not understand these things. Truly, truly, I say to you, we, look, notice plural here, speak of what we know and bear witness of what we have seen. And you do not accept our witness. Now here our Lord is talking about the Godhead, Father, Son, and Spirit. Notice this plural should remind you of Genesis 126. Let us make man in our image, in our likeness. Should remind you of Genesis 11:7. Come, let us go down and confound their language. She remind you of Isaiah 6, 8. And I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send who will go for us? There's that plural again. The plural where then one person of the Godhead speaks to the other persons of the Godhead and speaks on behalf of the Godhead. Here it is. Because what Jesus is saying is, We are telling you, 
of what we have seen personally and experienced personally about heaven. Something you have not seen and experienced because you haven't been in heaven. So the we is not the apostles because they were confused and baffled, just like the rest. The we is Father, Son, and Spirit because Jesus says the Father is in me doing his works through me and the Spirit is upon him. You understand? So here is that plural that goes with the other plurals showing it's the Trinity that's speaking in the plural. Right? Sorry, I don't know I'm walking around. I just do that. I get up and walk around. Right? We got it? You see the point? He's talking about heaven. Nicodemus, none of you have gone to heaven and experienced it. So we are telling you of things we have seen and we know. Are you the teachers who do not understand these things? Truly, truly, I say to you, we speak of what we know and bear witness of what we have seen, and you do not accept our witness. Now, what is he talking about? I have told you earthly things and you do not believe. How will you believe if I tell you of heavenly things? You know what he said, Nicodemus? I didn't even tell, tell you about heavenly things. Why? Because you haven't seen heaven. You haven't experienced heaven. And if I told you about heaven, you'd get confused. So I limit myself to earthly examples. And even that confused you. You see what he's saying here? Or are you guys getting bored here? You got it there? You see it? I'm using earthly examples. You don't get it, even though you're from the earth and you've seen earth. And you've seen... What do you think will happen to you if I speak of heavenly things, heavenly examples? Because unlike you, Nicodemus, you've never seen heaven. We speak of what we know and bear witness of what we have seen. And you don't accept our witness. You know Jesus can't be talking about the apostles. You know he can't be talking about John the Baptist. Because he's talking about being an eyewitness and seeing and experiencing heaven. That can only be true of Father, Son, Holy Spirit. So Jesus is saying, we, Father, Spirit, and I, bear witness of what we have seen, Father, Spirit, and I. And you don't accept our witness, right? Is that singing it so I can move on to the next point? Because now watch what 13 is going to say. Watch what 13 is going to say. You ready? This is why I'm telling you, you need to know your Bible. And no one has ascended to heaven. You see why? We alone can bear witness and testify of things we have personally seen and experienced because we are from heaven, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. None of you have gone into heaven to know what it's like firsthand, but I came down from heaven, the Son of Man, to tell you what it's like firsthand. Do you see the point, what he's saying here? None of you have gone to heaven to see it. No one has ever gone unto heaven and see it and come down to then tell you what it's like. I came down from heaven and the Father is with me and the Spirit is with me. And so we're telling you what heaven's like because that's where we came from. We've seen it. We've experienced it. So I'm giving you firsthand eyewitness testimony. Okay. Okay, now, but what does that mean? If Jesus is right, then he is. No one before this time ever entered heaven. Isaiah did not enter heaven. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob did not enter heaven. Daniel did not enter heaven. They saw heaven in their mind. They saw heaven in dreams and visions in their head. But they never went there in person. You see the difference now? Why I wanted to hammer Daniel 2, 28 to show you they were allowed to see 
heaven in their mind, in their head, a dream and vision, but they never went there in person. Either their spirit's going there or they're going there in the body. Now, someone will say, well, what about Enoch and Elijah? If you were to ask me that question, I said, then you're not that sharp. Because even if you want to say Elijah and Enoch went to heaven, they didn't come down after they went to heaven to relay that information. See, this is what you're not getting if you were to ask me that question. If you ask me the question, well, what about Enoch and Elijah? What about Enoch and Elijah? What about them? Even if you think they were taken into heaven where God dwells, they didn't come down. They went up, but didn't come down. We're not talking about going to heaven. We're talking about seeing heaven, experiencing it, and then coming down with a revelation of heaven. Right? Sorry, guys. My my ear, my nose is itching. Right? You with me there? Before I move on? I can't move on if you don't get it. But let me shock you a little more. Nowhere does the Bible say Enoch went to heaven. Nowhere does the Bible say Enoch went to heaven. Let's see. Genesis 5, 21, 24. Nowhere does the Bible say God took Enoch to heaven. And that's where he is. Here, Well, you think I'm lying here. Genesis 5, 21, 24. And Enoch lived 65 years and became the father of Methuselah. Then Enoch walked with God 300 years after he became the father of Methuselah, became the father of other sons and daughters. So all the days of Enoch were 365 years. Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. Took him where? Doesn't say took him to heaven. Doesn't say took him to heaven. Right? In Hebrews 11, 5. But by faith, Enoch was taken up. Taken up where? So he did not see death. And he was not found because God took him up. Took him up where? Didn't say heaven. For prior to being taken up, he was approved as being pleasing to God. Took him up where? If you believe the Bible and you believe church tradition, no one entered heaven where God dwells up until Christ's death, resurrection, ascension. It was Christ who hallowed out hell, and during his time, he took the souls from Abraham's bosom, and he allowed them to enter the kingdom. That means up to that point, they were not in God's heavenly presence. And I did a session on this. You with me there? What about Elijah? Well, did he go to heaven? But before he did, let me show you something. Let's go to Hebrews 11.5. Are you go are you with me there, guys? I mean, I can't. I'm trying to help you to go as deep as you can without confusing you. Let's see what here. Let's look at it. So here's the Greek, Hebrews 11.5, and not because he had taken up him, right? Taken, met, metithikin, God, right? Before for the translation, Metathesius, metathekin. Okay. See, your translation says took him up, but it doesn't have to mean took him up. Had translated him. Meta, like metamorphosis, it means to change. Right? So let's see what the word means. Metathemi, metathemi. To transfer, go over. It doesn't mean necessarily to take up. That's where you may get confused. Right? Meta titimi, to transfer, to change, go over. Right? To transpose, which is put in place of the other. Right? Changed. Meaning his location was changed. It doesn't necessarily mean taken up. 
That's the translator telling you it means taken up. So let's see how other translations render it. You see? By faith, Enoch was transferred, translated. God had translated him. Translated. You get it? It doesn't mean caught up. Now notice this is transferred to heaven. That's not even in the Greek. Be wary of your translations. Here. By faith, Enoch was taken away. God took him away. See how important it is to get the right translation? Exactly, Austin. You got it, right? So translations that say taken up, that's not literally the Greek. I like this one, complete Jewish Bible. By trusting, Hanoch was taken away from this life without seeing death. He was not to be found because God took him away. That's all the Greek means. It doesn't say taken up, nor does it say taken up to heaven. I showed you the Greek, right? So don't just blindly follow your translation. Here, Dewey Rames, American edition. By faith, Henoch was translated that he should not see death. He was not found because God had translated him. Enoch was removed. God removed him. How many of you are shocked to hear this? Some of you should know this if you've been following me, but if this is your first time, are you shocked to hear that nowhere in the Bible does say God took Enoch up into heaven? Now, the, the Greek doesn't have heaven. Be careful of these translations. Enoch was carried away from this earth. Yep. So he never died. Scripture tells us that before he's carried off, he was a man pleased God, see? Because God had taken Enoch. Now, this doesn't say this. It doesn't say to be with him. It doesn't say that. Okay? Are you with me there? I'm going to show you the Greek again. Faith enabled Enoch to be taken instead of dying. No one could find because God had taken him. See? Taken away, right? He was not because God took him away. That's all it says. Everyone with me there? That's all it says. Names of God. Faith enabled Enoch to be taken instead of dying. No one can find him because God had taken him. Scripture says that before Enoch was taken. See, that's all it says. Everyone got it? Let's go to Young's Little Translation. By faith, Enoch was translated not to see death, was not found because God did translate him. For before his translation, he had been testified to that he had pleased God. Again, let me show you the Greek. Oops, sorry. Let's go to the Greek. Are you guys shocked at that? Because it doesn't say... He was taken up to heaven where God dwells. Baxter, if I have to explain, taken up where? You know, Baxter, I'm going to send you to Mike Winger because you're not listening. The latter, dude. Metatithi was translated. Metatithi. And it's not taken up. Metathikin. Right? Right? Tis. Meta. Theseus translation, right? All right, let's see. What was Metete thinking? Metetithimi, transfer, desert change, to transfer, taken away, removed. See? Not making it up, guys. I'm not lying to you. Metathesius. Metathesius. Let's see what this means. Metathesis, a change, removal. That's all it means to be removed or to change. 
one location to another. Everyone got it? Before I move on? Everyone got it? Now, what about Elijah? Ah, oh, this one can get a little tricky, but let me show you something. Elijah, 2 Kings 2, 1. Now, it happened when Yahweh was about to take up Elijah by a whirlwind to heaven, right? Okay. That Elijah went with Elisha from Gilgal. He heaven, right? Okay. Verse 11, 2 Kings 2, 11. As they were going along and ta talking, behold, there appeared a chariot of fire and horses of fire. And it separated two of them, and Elijah went up by a whirlwind to heaven. To heaven, right? Guys, let me show you something. <laughs> Let's see something. All right. What the heck? All right. They didn't translate it that way? No translation? Man, these guys suck. All right. Let me see something. I Some translations have sky, but I guess these ones don't have it. I'm going to have to find somewhere else. <laughs> All right. Anyway, let me show you what the word heaven means. Okay. Second Kings 2.11. I just want to see because I didn't know. I'm not aware of. See, this is why translations can impact. Because when you think heaven, it doesn't mean it's wrong, but you may think God's heaven. Well, let's see. Let's see what the word heaven is. <laughs> I don't know why I'm doing that, guys. If you ask me why I keep doing that, I don't know. We were saying a little here. Let's see what the word for heaven is. Heaven, right? Ha Shamayim. Shamayim. Shalala la 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 la. Shalala la la. Shamayim. Here it is. Shamayim. Heaven or sky. Heaven or sky. And if you read Genesis 1, the word sky, right? When it says, let there be lights in the expanse of the heavens. He's obviously speaking of space and sky in Genesis 1, not talking about heaven where God dwells. Because then the birds fly and the firmament of the heaven and over the birds of the sky. You see that? Genesis 1, 26, birds of the sky. But the word is Shemaim. Does anyone think that the birds are flying in heaven where God dwells? Right? Everyone got this so far? You guys with me? Before I move on? Yeah, the angels and chariots fire. So when... He was taken to the sky because from Elisha's vantage point, Elisha's vantage point, he would have seen Elijah taking off into the sky. But then where did he go? You understand the point. So, yes, if you see someone in front of your eyes, right, jumping into a chariot and he takes off into the Shemaim, you're seeing him take off into the sky. Right? Right there, the sky. But then where did they take him? Well, if you believe what the scripture teaches, up until the time of Christ, no one went to God's heavenly abode. Yes, Catholic Benaiah. No one went up to God's heavenly abode. So yes, if a chariot shows up, Elijah jumps in a chariot, Takes off in the sky. Well, there's only one word. Shemaim. Now, Shemaim, does it mean God's heavenly abode? Does it mean space? Or does it mean sky? Right? Right? You see how complex, you see how deep, because again, Catholics, Orthodox, you believe what the ancient church taught, and you believe they're right about Scripture. Isn't it the teaching of the churches that up until the time of Christ, everyone went to Abraham's bosom, the paradise of Sheol, of Hades? All of them were there, and then the Lord, during the three days, descended 
when his body was in the tomb and took the souls and the spirits of the righteous. And then after that, they were allowed into God's heavenly presence. Don't you believe that? That's the ancient teaching of the church. Based on scripture, they didn't just make it up. So then, didn't you ever wonder yourself, well, if that's the case, what's Elijah doing there? I thought no one was in God's heavenly presence. It's only God and the angels. But Elijah went to heaven. No, he didn't. That's not what it says. It's not what it says. How many of you are hearing this for the first time and are shocked? It's not what it says. How many of you are being shocked that nowhere in your Bible does it say Enoch was taken to heaven? Isn't that the ancient teaching of the Christians? Which is why it's doctrine in the Orthodox Church, Assyrian Church, Catholic Church. Isn't it this the teaching? I didn't make it up. It's even in right the Gospel of Nicodemus, the Acts of Pontius Pilate, that during the three days, he went down to the netherworld, Abraham's bosom, where the righteous were there as disembodied souls. They were in peace and rest. And the wicked ring tormented, and the Lord took those spirits of the righteous and allow, allowed them to enter God's heavenly presence. Right? Exactly. The paradise, there were two paradises. The paradise of heaven and the paradise of Abraham's bosom. We got this before I move on? All right, anyway, you got it? Here, the same word in Genesis 1, the expanse of the heavens and the birds of the heavens, Shemaim. Same word, Shemaim. I didn't make it up. Now, why is this important? Why is this important? If we believe Jesus, and we do, no one prior to Christ went into heaven, saw heaven, came down to reveal its mysteries. Nobody. That's what our Lord says. Nobody. Jesus comes down from heaven, having been there since the time God's heavenly abode was created. He with the Father and the Spirit are there with the angels. The Trinity and the angels come down from heaven into the world, go back up. No one went up there to see what it's like, to experience it and come down up until the time of Christ. That's what he says. Now, after Christ, after Christ, people can go to heaven and see it and come down. Only after Christ. So Isaiah never went into heaven. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob never went to heaven. Daniel never went to heaven. They were on earth and they saw heaven in their mind, in their head, in a dream, in a vision. 